Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Friday, August 30th, second show of the day for y'all. We're going to close out the week with a fun one, the final week before we have NFL regular season football. Finally made it, y'all. Should be a fun weekend in college football as well. But we're going to look at the Jaguars schedule. I'm going to offer my final Jaguars season prediction here. We already did one earlier in the year. Some things have changed in my mind a little bit for the Jaguars and for some other teams around the league that are on their schedule. So we're going to dive back into this and offer a final prediction here for the Jaguars regular season record and then also look at how things could go in the playoffs. So I really appreciate y'all tuning in here. If you enjoy the content, please hit that like button. So I look at this team and and there are some questions to answer for the Jaguars. You know, can they stay healthy? Obviously, you could ask that question about any team, but because the Jaguars last year, I mean, injuries really were the main catalyst that derailed their season. So can they stay healthy and can they overcome injuries if they cannot stay healthy? That is one major question that we just won't know the answer to, right, until until the moment comes. Um, Can Ryan Nielsen, can he continue to work his magic in jacks on third down in the red zone, big money downs? During the preseason, so far so good, but it's preseason, so you can't take too much away from that. I really like the intensity, the detail that he brings to the the Jaguars' defense, and I also love his top um, assistant, Chris Richard, such a great coach on the field in practice. So I do think the Jaguars' defense will be much improved under Ryan Nielsen and more consistent, but still got to prove it. Um, what is the offensive play calling situation here in Jacksonville? Is it press Taylor? Is it Doug Peterson? Does it really matter? Well, it matters to the owner. Uh, I think that's pretty clear. I think it matters not in like the scheme of the offense, like the overall approach, but the moment to moment decision-making as a play caller. I just think Doug Peterson is so good at it. So good at dialing things up specific, specific situations, specific moments, excuse me. Um, I think he's excellent in that regard. Is Press Taylor? It's hard to say based off one year because that one year you had offensive line injuries, you had receivers not getting the job done. You had a lot of issues that really made it difficult for Press Taylor to throw his best stuff out there. So I still think it's a question. And uh, are they actually improved in the run blocking department? Ezra Cleveland, healthy Ezra Cleveland, should help the Jaguars improve in the run blocking department. So should Mitch Morse. Um, Anton Harrison being fully healthy this year, not dealing with the shoulder, should also help. Going into year two, he's looked improved so far. Um, Cam Robinson being healthy, not being suspended. Could that help as well? So, you know, and I think Brandon Sheriff, we've seen him be a good run blocker in the past. I don't think he's completely washed. I think what you've seen is, the last couple of years, the run blocking across the board for the Jaguars hasn't been up to snuff, and I think part of that has been their offensive line philosophy. Part of it has been injuries. They went back to the drawing board with the run game um, and how they want to get things done up front on the offensive line. And so answering the question, if that actually helps or not, is going to be a big factor for the Jaguars. It absolutely is. But I still think the combination of quarterback, you know, Trevor Lawrence, y'all know how I feel about Trevor Lawrence. I think he's absolutely one of the best young quarterbacks in the game and a top five to seven quarterback in the league, regardless of age. I think coaching, when it comes to Doug Peterson, his offensive staff, Ryan Nielsen, his defensive staff, you've got good coaches there. Uh, Heath Farwell, you know, can't forget about him as a special teams coach either. Talked about special teams earlier today. I think he's one of the best special teams coaches in the league. You have the skill position talent on offense. I feel good enough about the offensive line as a whole baseline. I feel good about Ryan Nielsen and the talent on defense, as I mentioned. So, uh, and Cam Little, I think will be an improvement for them at kicker. They have one of the best punters in the league. They have one of the best long snappers in the league. They have a lot of really good core special teamers. So I think they're going to be super competitive, but they start off with four playoff teams from last year and the Colts who were a couple plays away from making it to the playoffs. So that is a tough start, but I do have them starting those first five games, three and two. Um, Now, how exactly does that play out to me? That's like actually the most difficult portion of the schedule 
to kind of predict each individual game, but I feel comfortable saying like, even though the Dolphins have as much speed as anyone in the world, the Jaguars could beat them. Like if Ryan Nielsen has his guys come out and they're able to just make Tua pause for a moment, not let them um, just just read and react as quickly as possible offensively, and you know play physical against those speedy receivers, um, not have any big coverage busts, which easier said than done against that football team. It's also hard to stop their running game. Uh, but the Dolphins defensively, there's some question marks. New defensive coordinator, obviously. They do have some really good talent on the back end and throughout the roster defensively, but they lost a lot on the defensive line. Christian Wilkins gone, Andrew Van Ginkle gone. Uh, Bradley Chubb is not going to be healthy for that game. Um, you've still got Jalen Phillips just trying to get back. So, again, I think that's a winnable game. I think the Browns is winnable because I think it's going to be a low-scoring game overall. I know it wasn't last year. But a lot of that had to do with Mike Caldwell's defense giving up coverage busts. I don't see that happening again this time. And a lot of it also had to do with Trevor Lawrence playing through injury and struggling, uh, not having Christian Kirk out there, not having a healthy Zay Jones. Um, So I think that's going to be a close, lower-scoring game. And in a low-scoring game, in a a game that's going to come down to the wire, do I want Deshaun Watson or Trevor Lawrence? It's a pretty easy answer for me. Uh, So I think... Out of those two games, they'll go one and one, and I think the next two that they'll go one and one. I have them beating the Bills and losing to the Texans. Um, the Bills are a good football team, but they've struggled with the Jaguars for whatever reason during Josh Allen's uh, time in Buffalo, and I think that that will probably continue just because Ryan Nielsen's defense is going to be prepared. They're dealing with no Stephon Diggs in this game, and yeah, there's a lot of talented pass catchers in Buffalo, but. There's nobody that that's that one guy that you have to, you know, he can't beat us, right? So I think that they'll be able to get the job done defensively. And then Buffalo on defense, they've got so many new parts, so many moving parts from last season. Matt Milano is not going to be able to play in that game. Um, so again, two and two to start the season. And then I have them taking care of the Colts. I've talked about it a lot. I think Trevor Lawrence is just so good against Gus Bradley's defense. He has been throughout his career uh, since Doug Peterson took over and, I think that Gus Bradley's defense lacks the corner play. Uh, I think overall that that Anthony Richardson is going to have some ups and downs, especially early on in the year with his accuracy. And so I have the Jaguars getting to 3-2, and two, which that hasn't changed. In London, I have them going 2-0, and oh, which hasn't changed either. They could easily lose to the Bears depending on how things go. But, you know, the Jags have so much experience Going over to London, it'll be Caleb Williams' first game across the pond. And uh, I just look at their experience over there and the fact that they're go- Ryan Nielsen going against a rookie quarterback is usually a good recipe uh, throughout his history as a coach. So I have them winning both of those games. The Patriots have a good defense. They don't have a very good offense. I don't know if Drake May will be playing by that time. Jacoby Brissett's supposed to be the starter, but uh, – I think either way, the Jaguars will beat the Patriots in London. So I have them getting to 5-2. and two. I have two losses after London, though. Versus Green Bay, which the Jaguars could win that game. The Green Bay Packers still have to prove that their defense is for real. I think offensively, there's no question about it for them. But defensively, Jeff Halfley's got to prove it. They have the talent to do it. I think they have the coaching to do it, but it's got to come together. But still, I have the Jaguars losing that game because I think it will come together, and uh, I think that their offense is going to be incredibly difficult to deal with, even for Ryan Nielsen. Um, At Philly, tough game. I think Philadelphia is the most talented team in football, top to bottom. I don't think they're the best team in football, but they're up there. They're up there. They might be a, a... I haven't done my final predictions for the playoffs and and Super Bowl and all that, but they might be my representative from the NFC. Uh, I don't love Nick Sirianni, but I do love the coaching hires he made this offseason. They got real professionals in the building, defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator, so much talent across the board. They revamped their secondary. I think Philly is going to be a tough one, really tough one. So I have the Jaguars 5-4 and four after nine games. A win at home against the Vikings, who Sam Darnold's going to be their starting quarterback. Uh, I, I think that speaks for itself. And they also have some questions in the secondary. Um, and then a road loss to Detroit to be 6-5. and five. The Lions, they're another favorite in the NFC for me, clearly. Uh, 
they're so well coached, so much continuity across the board. I just think that the Lions are going to be able to get the job done at home against the Jags. A win at home against the Texans to get even at 7-5, and five, so they split with the Texans there. Um, I think that the Jaguars and Texans are extremely competitive. I think that they're going to be splitting games for a long time. I really do. A loss on the road at the Titans, that just is uh, its one of those games like I think the Jaguars should win that game, but it's the Titans, and I know they have sweeped the Titans in recent years. They didn't do it last year, obviously, but those games are so competitive, so tough. I think the Titans are, you know, trying to knock the Jags out of the playoff picture, maybe trying to fight to get back over 500 or close to 500 for the Titans. Um, I, I think the Titans win that one in Tennessee. And then really exciting, I have the Jaguars four straight wins to close it out. And this isn't just because they did it in 2022. I have soured on the Jets, and that game is in Jacksonville. Um, the reasons I've soured on the Jets, I think overall, like, there's not nearly as much depth up front for the Jets as there used to be. Yeah, you still have Quinn and Williams, but Hassan Reddick, he doesn't seem like he wants to play for you. He's happy to just sit out and get fined. Um, and then offensive line-wise, like I like some of the moves they made, but like, are we really getting fired up about Patrick Simpson and Morgan Moses? To me, that doesn't really move the needle as much. And then Aaron Rodgers, he's coming off the Achilles. How effective will he be? Will he be able to stay healthy all year? I just think at that point in the season – uh, the bottom might fall out on the Jets, and they have a lot of other guys that are injury-prone as well. So I have the Jaguars winning that one. I have them handling the Las Vegas Raiders, which we don't really need to talk about. I think that's pretty obvious. Beating the Titans in Jacks, splitting with the Titans, and closing out with a win over the Colts to get to 11-6. and six. Um, I Again, I just don't think that the Colts, even though I really like their defensive line, I like their linebackers, like their safeties, Offensively, I think the offensive line, the running game is going to be strong, but I don't think that Gus Bradley's defense can stop Trevor Lawrence when it matters, and I also don't think that um, Shane Steichen's offense, passing game-wise, is going to be consistent enough, not because of Shane Steichen, but because Anthony Richardson's accuracy. I think Anthony Richardson has a lot of the fundamentals of playing quarterback down really well, but accuracy is not not his strong point at this point. So I have the Jaguars closing out against the Colts to get to 11 and six. Again, predicting games this far in the future is kind of ludicrous, but people love it. So we're going to keep doing it here. And I want to get my thoughts on paper, not on paper, but you know, on video. Uh, so entering the playoffs, I have them as like the five seed with, with an 11 and six record. I think that's, that, that's where they would end up. And again, it's just way too early to talk about this type of stuff like playoff matchups, what they could look like. We have no idea what these teams will look like <clears throat> in, come you know January. But you never know what will happen. Want to get, it, get, get the thoughts out here again. So my best guess in the playoffs is they would probably be playing Houston or Buffalo. I would have Houston or Buffalo as the, uh, as the three seed or four seed. So I think that that's how one of those teams is who it's going to be. Two places they would have already played throughout the season, which I think can be helpful, certainly. Knowing those environments a little bit obviously will be heightened during the playoffs. I would have them winning that round. Um, I think that the Jaguars will have more experience, <clears throat> excuse me, more experience in the playoffs than the Texans. I think it will mean more to the Jaguars than the Texans at that point. Um, it's a coin flip, honestly, either way. But then Buffalo as well, I just think that that team has too much um, attrition injury-wise. Already lost Matt Milano. Um, they they have, again, no true number one receiver, and I think that the Jaguars would be able to handle either of those opponents. But that would probably leave them taking on like the Chiefs in the second round, divisional round. I'm not going to predict that the Jaguars beat the Chiefs. But you make the tournament. You never know how things can go once you get there. So I think that should be the main goal. Make the tournament. You want to win your division. You do. But I think the Texans are going to win 11 or 12 games. I think the Jaguars are more like a 10 to 11 win team. I did predict 11, but I wouldn't be surprised at 10. I think the floor for them it really is nine wins when you look at their schedule. I would be really surprised if they don't finish with a winning record and how fitting would it be if they go 9-8 and eight for a third straight year. But I have them winning 11 games. I think playing some teams with quarterback question marks will help them. I think 
they have the Colts number at this point right now. And I think that they'll be able to play the other two divisional opponents tough enough to get to uh, four and two in the division, which is really going to help. So that's where I have the Jaguars right now. Let me know what you think about the Jaguars upcoming 2024 campaign in the comment section below. If you enjoy the content, please like subscribe, hit that notification bell. Y'all have a good one.